One of the things in the Mormon church is that was taught to me, at least growing up, is that when you sin, the Holy Spirit leaves you. And so that's why being righteous and being obedient and doing all the right things and following the prophet and following the commandments and basically being as like pure and righteous as you can be is necessary because if you sin, then the Holy Spirit leaves you and basically like you're open for attack from the devil. Yeah. And so the way that I kind of correlated this in my mind as a kid is like, I must be doing something wrong to be getting attacked by the devil, basically. Um, and and I just didn't understand because I'm like, what am I doing? And I would like stay up all night praying to Heavenly Father and like praying that this would stop and praying that these dreams would go away, praying that like these paranormal, horrible, terrible things that were so scary for me as a kid would stop. And I'd be praying all the time and like trying to find out like where, like, where do I need to repent? What am I doing wrong? Yeah. Um, cause I was like, obviously I'm not protected. And so like, I must be the reason why, like, cause if I wasn't sinning, then, then these things wouldn't be able to happen to me. Do you think um, there's any validity in that? No, not not with the understanding I have now, because we know that like when you have the Holy Spirit, like your the Holy Spirit is your advocate, and the Holy Spirit um, convicts of sin, uh, but you are never condemned in Christ. And I felt so much condemnation growing up in in the church, and I know that like the the Holy spirit is more powerful than any demonic spirit. And so even if, if there is a demonic spirit present, the Holy Spirit's not going to run away and, and leave you in, in the time of need that you need him most. I guess my confusion with it is when I experienced demonic things later on in life, it really was because I had, I had open portals in my sin, but I was not in Christ at that point. I was I was dead in my sin. I, that was when I was deep in new age. Um, and so I played with all the devil's devices, yeah, yeah. ate off his table. And I did create those legal contracts with the demonic realm for them to be able to mess with me. But that is a little different than when you are in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, because at that point, I wasn't. But I think I even now, like as a believer, as somebody who knows and who has been saved and has encountered Jesus, like I still have that fear sometimes that like if I fall short or something that God is going to look away because I've definitely read that in scripture. So I I am interested to hear more like about your perspective on that. Yeah. And so what I would say to that is um, I think a lot of people take the verse where it says that like no unclean thing can be in the presence of the Lord. And that like, he doesn't, he doesn't want to basically have our sin before him. But the thing is, is that the Bible also tells us that when you are, are born again, that you are now granted the righteousness of Christ and that you are justified before God be um, because of him. So being justified in the Lord is being seen by God, just as if I had never sinned. And even when I do fall short, it says, I was actually just reading in the Psalms um, the other day that like he, he looks upon us with loving mercy and kindness because he knows our form and he does not hold our sins against us in the sense that like, he knows the fragility of like our human state to constantly, fall short in our flesh. Um, and because he knows our form, he's gracious to us and his, uh, mercy is, is long lasting, but in Jesus, and this is the other thing that I've learned as an adult that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mm -hmm. mind. And the only thing that basically as a believer that the devil can try to tempt you with is fear. Even mm -hmm fear as a believer of like, am I actually saved? Like, am I this or blah, blah, blah? Like now am I a good enough Christian before the Lord when 
if it was about you, then you would have something to merit before God where it's like, no, you are hidden in Christ. You are the righteousness of Christ. He has clothed you in a robe that covers you in the blood of Jesus. And so you are, you're not expected to be Jesus now, uh, yeah. who is, who walked perfectly and sinlessly and blamelessly all the days of his life before the Lord while he was on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, but what it means is now you have the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit living within you to have reign and dominion over sin like you did not have before. Mm -hmm. And as you grow and, and become more sanctified in your understanding and in like putting on the mind of Christ and renewing yourself in the word, you grow in the in that strength and you start to understand like what does the armor of God actually mean to protect me against the the snares of the enemy um but that like you've been given all authority in Christ to trample on scorpions and mm -hmm. to defeat evil and and sin and death because of Jesus not because of you but because of Jesus yeah and if I if we are, if we just confess our sins before him he is faithful and just to forgive us and so if and when we fall short and we sin, we just confess to Christ instead of agreeing with that fear that the enemy is going to speak to us to say, oh, see, now, now you're not covered. Now I can get you. It's like, no, because I, I know that my father has me. And because of what Jesus did for me, like I have a repentant heart before him. I come to him, I confess my sins and I give, I ask for his strength to renew my mind. And I, I, I cancel the dominion that this has. I don't agree with the belief that that I am now this because I I sinned today. No, like mm -hmm. don't speak to yourself that way and don't confess things um, that the enemy wants you to agree with. And he uses fear to do that. And so God has not given you a spirit of fear. Like only fear the Lord your God, and you know what what he's done for you, what he has plucked you out of. And so if he has done that, um, I love that it says that no one can even come to the father unless the Holy spirit has drawn him. And so if God has done that and you know that always stand by that and remember that no one can pluck you out of the father's hands mm -hmm. and you are already with Christ in heavenly places. So in your spirit, you are already seated with him in heavenly places. The devil is still going to try to, to get you, to believe that you're not and use fear to do that, even as a Christian, um, to try to weaken you. But what I've, wh what he's really taught me and is, is showing me a lot more is how much authority and dominion we have over the spirit of fear to have power, the power that, that Jesus walked in and he was trying to teach other people to walk in that power. Yeah. And it all starts with the mind and, and what you believe and confess with your mouth because the power of life and death is in the tongue. Mm -hmm. And so as you really start to read the scriptures with this lens and this understanding, you see that, that the reason why God told us not to do certain things is because there are things that we can do that will allow the devil and demons legal right and access to mm -hmm. our lives to now start to afflict us. And so when God tells us don't do this or don't do that or, or do this, um, it's because he wants to keep us safe and guard us from the enemy who hates us and wants to afflict us and destroy our lives and bring, you know, sorrow and anxiety and bitterness and depression and trauma and all of these things. Um, and so the Lord does give us guidelines for our betterment and for our protection, but he gives us power and he gives it to us in his love and the ability to then express his love to others in the way that Jesus did, which I think is like the most powerful thing that you will see. And that's why he said, you will know my disciples by how you love one another. So if you have loved me now go and love one another, because it's the love of Jesus that truly changes and transforms people's yeah. lives.